So how is God challenging his daughters to rise up and take their rightful place? Lisa Bevere shares what true strength really is, how it can change our world for the better. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. Also remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. So what does it truly mean to be a strong woman? And how does godly strength differ from the world's? Well, today's special guest is here to tell us all about that. Joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Day. Hey. Are you a strong woman over there? <laughs> well, and Joan, only because of him, thank God. <laughs> you know, I, I love our guest today because I feel like me especially, I have a tendency to overcomplicate things and get way too wordy. No. But she, I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know what would have given that away. But she has such a way of just really bringing it down. It's almost like here's this giant funnel and she has a way of bringing it right down to the bottom. Yes. And it's getting to the point and making it so practical. Yes. So this is going to be a very good show today. I, I love know that. that already. Dorothy Newton. You're a strong woman. Yes, I am. You know, am. the definition... Yes, you are. <laughs> the, the, the definition of woman is like, some people can't even answer that question. Exactly. exactly. But you know what? <laughs> it's, in, it's insane. <laughs> You're going it there is. today. It is. But God called us all. Yeah. He yes. has equipped us all. And yeah. he, you know, there's a perfect scripture in the Bible about going out into all the nation and yeah. preach the word. Yeah. And when I do that, I am strong. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can just do anything because he's called me to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I said that, but I mean, seriously, um, with all of the things going on in our world today, I think it's so important to understand that God created man and woman. Absolutely. Yes. Mur yes. Murdoch, there was, there was nothing else. You yeah. were either male or female. So it, it can get confusing if somebody doesn't know to how to describe what a woman is. Or if, you know, someone <laughs> wants to try to update the Bible. <laughs> you know, so how are you, Rebecca Weiss? <laughs> it's and little one right here. <laughs> so good, and I think it's very important to continue to speak the truth of God's word, mm -hmm. yeah. is he's not a God of confusion. And exactly. when you get into a relationship with him, he clears up all the deception. He does. We're living so in a good. really deceptive world. Yeah. And I think strong women are really important. Yeah. And I think our world is kind of twisting what that is. And yeah. so I think it's very important yes. to define so good. what is a biblically strong woman. There you go. Because God needs us to be strong, but it might not be exactly what the world is saying yeah. that right. is. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There you and go. Rachel, that's not anything that we shy away from at the table. Yeah, We absolutely. talk about the Word of God. Everything that we talk about needs to really line up with biblical principles. Absolutely. And the inerrant Word of God, I always say it's either all true or it's all a lie. Yeah. There's nothing in between. And either you trust God or you don't. And I can say I'm a strong woman because I was raised by strong. the strongest woman. Uh -uh. And you can see it on display here today at the table. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that you um, raised us the way that you did and let us know that it's okay to stand up and speak out. And that yeah. God's given us a voice for a reason and we need to use it. And, and from one strong woman to another strong woman, Lisa Bevere. <laughs> We have been strong for many years. We have been strong. I mean, but strong you know, when, when we say that we're strong, it doesn't mean that we're perfect. Right. Because there are seasons where you have questions. And when we're raising our kids, when we talk about like, this is so hard, you know, and that we're like running around the yes. house. Yes. But um, God is so faithful in every season. But we really do have to start to identify what a woman is and what a man is because it has been so blurred, the lines. Yeah. And it's actually really an attack against women. Yeah. And I don't know that we understand that because there was something that began between a woman and a serpent in the garden that yeah. is now a, the body of Christ and a dragon. Yeah. And everything mm. about womanhood is under attack right now. Yeah. And, you know, that it's just, it's, it's a crazy world. And, and what we've seen as kind of Christian women is we're not known for being strong. Yeah. You know, we've, we've gotten the message that, that strong is wrong. Like, we can't be strong as Christian women. But here's what I love, Ephesians 6.10. And I just, going through Ephesians 6.10 through 18, it talks about God and how he is strong. And what I love in the message, it says God is strong and he wants you 
strong. And so how does God make us strong? Is it mentally? Is it? No, he actually gives us weaponry. And he talks about prayer. He talks yeah. about the different warfaring in the spirit. We don't wrestle mm -hmm. with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness who exalt mm -hmm. themselves against us knowing God. And knowing God, you have to understand that God made us male and female in his image. And so in my opinion, when you attack male and female, mm -hmm. you're attacking the image of God. Yeah, and are. so we are we are coming against something the same way, way if you darker. If you yeah. attack yeah. marriage, I mean, remember you and I yeah. talked about yeah. it? Mm -hmm. We could not even believe yeah. that, you know, when the, when the Supreme Court came out and said, you know, that a man can marry a man and it'd be called marriage, but well, you and I know how sacred mm -hmm. covenant is to God oh, yeah. and that it be between one man and one woman. But now we're in the minority for saying that, and yet it is truth, and we will continue to speak the truth on that. Yeah. At the same time, you love everyone in the yeah. process of talking about this. I mean, love without truth- Is a lie. It's a lie, and that's yeah. what we were seeing. Love wins, mm -hmm. love wins. Well, love won. And Jesus is love, and yes, God yes. is love, and yes, so good. love won. Right. But we have distorted what love is, and yeah, we true. God is love, but we've yes. made love God, and so we're like, oh, love is God. No, God is love, right. and so if we're, God is love, we have to come to Him based on who He is, you know. And I think right now we don't even know who He is. People don't read scriptures; they think because they've read a meme that they've read the Bible for the day, you know. <laughs> like, well, I retweeted it. Well, it has nothing to do with anything, right. and so we have to know yeah. what is truth. And and I love what you said about. And, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to, there's going to, there's going to be some onus on the church. The church has not always loved its daughters well. And the church has not always empowered people the way they're supposed to be yeah. empowered. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible is very clear that the pastors are, and the preachers, all fivefold, are to perfect the saints for the saints to do the work of the ministry. But instead, somehow we're like, come and watch me do the work of the ministry. Wow. And yeah. when that kind of dynamic goes on, there's pressures, there's imbalances, there's yeah. things that are, are, need to be called out and corrected. Yeah. And I feel like right now Jesus is saying, I love my bride and I'm gonna wash her with the water of the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of people that wanna shame the bride. I would say that the church hasn't necessarily preached the truth in love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the culture is now preaching love without truth. Yeah. And so wow. we have this challenge of merging love and truth, but how we merge that is we first live it. People are like, I'm enough. No, you're not. On no. your own, you're not enough. No. I know. You're not enough. No. In Christ, you're more than enough. Yeah. Because he is more than enough. Exactly. But on my own, no. Yeah. And so when I get in the word, I see him reflected in me. Yeah. When I get in the word, the word rightly divides. Because we live in a day and a time where a lot of things sound right but feel wrong. And so we have to, according to, to the book of Romans, we've got to be able to rightly divide right. the word yes. of God. And getting into the word means that we have an awareness of being able to discern things. And mm -hmm. discern is yes. not suspicion. Discern is That's being good. able to rightly divide. What is really going on and here? How important is it to not water down the word? Yeah, we to make to, it fit what absolutely. you want or what you think feels comfortable. But we have to... You know, well, actually, sometimes you have the to erase parts of it to make it relevant. That that's agenda. what some churches are doing. Or you're trying to find a scripture that supports something that you yeah. want to do or a behavior yeah. or lifestyle that you want to live. Yeah. And it's not really correct. Right. And, and I do think that the church has graded sins. Like we've said, okay, those kind of things out there are really bad, but so are, so are greed. Sowing strife. I'm, so is I'm gossip. Gossip. Yeah. I, I'm horrified by what I'm seeing in the church right now. How people think it's their job to call out other church people. Like, oh, I they're know. not doing this. And I'm like, you, like I've said, you know, I'll call them out on it and say, have you gone to those people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if your goal is just to out them, yeah. Well done. Wow. If your goal is to restore them, yes. yeah. yeah. Was well, it somebody, I guess it was, um, I think it was John Hagee that said, um, it's a dangerous thing to pull someone else's sin out from under the blood of Jesus. And Ooh, you know, when we talk about judging others, especially so leaders and Good. people in the body of Christ, I mean, it is a very dangerous thing. And especially when we start naming, and it's amazing to me how many people have no platform and have never won one person to Jesus, and yet they're armchair quarterbacks that sit back 
and judge and have never done anything as yeah. far as uh, ministry. Or so leadership. we have to be very careful about judging because there's yeah, only yes. one who knows the heart yeah. of any individual and it's God. Yeah, yeah, or people that do have a platform and love to call people out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love, I, I wish I wasn't in the category of the oldest ones, <laughs> but you know, when you're young, you're quick to judge. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, because, you, you know, you're, you haven't lived a lot of life. Oh, yeah. But it's interesting in the incident where the woman is caught in adultery and Jesus says, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. It says they go away the oldest ones first. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer you live, the, no, you, the more you know you need mercy, mm -hmm. the more you're willing yeah. to give mercy. I mean, when you're younger, you're like, stone them, yeah. stone them. Yeah. But when you're older, you're mm -hmm. like, you know what? Save the grace of God, there go I. Yeah. Now, I will say, I've, I love that I actually get to do some youth things still, which is kind of funny. I think they just bring me in as a token grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I was with some brilliant young... You're still very young, by the way. Well, so you you are. Don't be saying that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not receiving what you're saying. Okay, okay go ahead. Because we're the same okay. age. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you're a little bit older than me, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, oh month. One month. One month. One month. Oh, my gosh. We <laughs> <Savage. laughs> are savage. Uh, you know, I told them, I said... You know, you guys are really quick to deconstruct. And I'm not saying there aren't things that need to be deconstructed. Yeah. But the motive is always love. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, God will deconstruct so we can reconstruct. So exactly. And I said, you guys are really good at criticizing, but you've never built anything. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes it's, it's easy to say, I'm going to deconstruct when I've never built. Yeah. I can yeah. be a critic when I've never oh, that actually preach. had to, oh to do oh, something. That preach right and, there. and Acts 2.17 says, God is going to support his spirit on the last days on his sons and daughters so that they can prophesy, not criticize. Yeah. And yes. so we mm -hmm. have to speak what could be mm -hmm. rather than just attack what is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and then, the, you know, you always hear, well, Jesus flipped tables. Well, it was his table to flip. Yeah. You don't get to go around flipping everybody <laughs> else's so table. Good. You that flip your so own table. Like, I, I got to flip my own table. Oh my I think that we mix the term mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Yeah. And grace is an empowerment to walk in what has been yeah. Yeah. given to us. Yeah. And I think I think sometimes we need a lot of mercy and yeah. and we're not sowing a lot of mercy. Yeah. And um, you know, one of but the But Marcus things, did. Marcus That's one did. thing he did always. in his life. Yeah. yeah. He always was yeah. merciful and graceful. Yeah. yeah. And and humble. And God blessed that and rewarded that. By the way, we were we were in our fortieth year of ministry. I mean oh. of um, marriage. marriage. And yeah, because so, I think we're kind of tracking. Yeah, yeah we are. We, I think we're we like tracking were living, along the same. We were in the yeah. south, and I was in the yeah, north, and we were right. tracking. You know, um, going back to what's going on in, in this culture, um, standing in the middle and declaring truth is going to be one of the hardest positions yeah. any of us are going to yeah. have to walk in. And strong requires us yes. to do that. It's not so hard for you, though, Lisa, though, because you have a passion <laughs> and a belief, just like I do, yeah. that we will go to hell with a water pistol if we believe something is truth. We're well, not, we're not going to back down from it. No, but I feel like right now everything's binary. It's everybody has to choose sides. Yeah. And yet you look at, you look at this moment where the children of Israel are coming out of the wilderness and they're getting ready to take their promised land and they're getting ready to go into the battle plan with Jericho and God sends an angel and Joshua says to him, whose side are you on? And he says, I'm not on either side. I am the captain of the army of the yeah. Lord of hosts. Wow. Take off your shoes. This is holy ground. And I think right now, we think God's choosing sides. Yeah. And God's like, I'm, I'm beyond your sides. Yeah. I am a king. Yes. And so I think right now, we, we have to watch because the enemy is dividing yes. so that he can mm -hmm. destroy. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was crazy when I wrote Without Rival, I opened up with something that kind of at the time seemed really random and now it seems really pertinent. I said that I believe that the end of our world wasn't going to come from an alien invasion, like Scientology would say, mm -hmm. but I believe it's going to come from widespread alienation. And what we wow. have is people's hearts mm -hmm. growing cold yeah. because lawlessness has abound. The yeah. love of many has, their hearts have grown cold. And then what comes in? Deception. Yeah. And so this is what's going on in our culture right now. So it's going to require strength. But the strength that you and I have, we get from God. Yeah. That's right. right. That's right. That's I just right. think it's crazy because 
at one point at the table, we're talking about like, hey, marriage needs be to be between a man and a woman. And, and now in our world, it's like, you, d you don't think that it could get any crazier or any weirder. And now it's like, oh, actually, um, people are choosing like what gender they wanna be or what pronouns they wanna be called. And I'm like, how are they gonna teach this in school in English when you're trying to like decipher what these words mean? And now it's like, they don't actually mean anything. We look at Romans 1. We are, we are there right now, yeah. there. refusing yeah. to worship God. Well, we acknowledge him, but we don't worship him. Yeah. Wow. Worship means I surrender his ways. It means I believe his word is yes. truth. Refusing, it says that we're turned over to our own foolish reasoning and thinking. Every time I think, okay, it can't get any crazier, it gets <laughs> no, right. exactly. Yes. crazier. Yes. 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 What will you say to people who are watching who are truly confused about their gender. Mm -hmm. They're confused about marriage. They don't believe in marriage yeah, anymore, sure. be, um, man and, and um, woman. What would you say about soul ties? Because I was having a conversation with a friend and you know she just didn't believe it, understand it. What would you say to her who is you know, contemplating whether or not you know, she should have sex before marriage and what, it, and what that looks like? First and foremost, as far as disappointment, mm -hmm and brokenness yeah. and gender. I mean, nobody said that we're gonna ever feel completely fulfilled in this life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, a beautiful young man that was my hairdresser, was always coloring my hair before I said I'm going gray. Anyway, he, he reached out to me and he said, I'm not at the salon anymore because I'm transitioning to a woman and I know you don't agree with that. And I said, here's the thing, I love you and I can disagree with people that I love. I've been married for almost 40 years, which means I've disagreed with John a lot, yeah. but I still love him. Yeah. And I said, but here's my concern. You're going to make this change. And I'm, I'm worried that this mm -hmm. change, what you're thinking it's gonna give you, right. yeah. you're gonna find you're disappointed. Mm -hmm. And so we all in this life will have brokenness. We'll have a measure of brokenness. I can't heal myself. God is the one who makes right. me whole. And this life is a vapor. I feel like we're forgetting that, yeah. that we are here so just to pass through. Yeah. This is not my home. This is not where I'm gonna ever feel like I've arrived. I feel completely fulfilled. My husband can't be that to me. My gender can't be that to me. Right. So God is our source. And if he is the one who made me, he's the one that wove me together. He knows all of my longings. He knows all of my brokenness. And so I think a lot of times that fear that God, you won't do that for me. I don't know that I'll ever be satisfied. I don't know if I'll ever be fulfilled. That surrender needs to happen. So marriage doesn't fix everything. If yeah. anything, marriage highlights everything. It complicates. Right. Everything. Yeah. Yes. It complicates things. Absolutely. I mean, it highlights like, your brokenness, yeah, honestly. It triggers you. Yeah. It triggers, you know, <laughs> but triggers are good. Yeah. Because they show tri you where you need to be healed. Exactly. Yes. yes. And then the word of God shows where we find that healing. Soul ties. I got married and I had such a promiscuous past. And when I got married, it was like all those things went off as a time bomb. Yeah. And I wrestled with things that I didn't understand. And I remember coming to John and I said, you know, if, if I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, I'm certainly wrestling with that because I am having a really hard time. I'm having nightmares and all this kind of stuff mm. going on. And I had a beautiful older man who adopted me as a kind of a surrogate father in Fort Worth. Oh. And I called him and I said, I can't, I can't sleep at night. I'm going through this. I have no peace. And, and he said, I'm going to send you some cassette tapes. I listened to the, and it was about soul ties. Mm. And I went through those things. And, and I actually, we actually have that prayer on our website. I've put it in a number of my books. That's good. And, and I went through and I broke the soul ties uh, and different things that where I had given pieces of my heart to other yeah. people. And you God can send it back one. and retrieve your pieces. Abs I mean, that, there is a prayer where you can yes. do that. I just yeah. said, you know, angels of the most high God, bring them back, yeah. bring them back. I can't go and get back. And so I was able to break those things. And in this book, we talk about those things because those are real things. Yeah. And, and when you have sex with people, there's something that gets woven together yeah. that when you are no longer with them, it gets torn apart. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're married, you may just have a fragment to be able to give. So good. Yeah. That is so, so good. One of the things I wanted to say was, because you were talking about your hairdresser and you were saying, I don't know if this is really going to fulfill you. And I was actually thinking about this last night when I was 
before I surrendered my life to God at 19, I thought about my goals and my dreams. And I surrendered my life to God and I said, whatever you want, I'll do. And how now I'm a mother and that's one of the most important things to me and how I'm married and I love being married and how it's so interesting that what I thought I wanted at 19 and where I am now wouldn't be where yeah. I am, but how I'm so much more fulfilled right? because I submitted to God. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to speak to the value of motherhood because I think in our generation and under, we're just being told to push it off, push it off, wait, have a career. And I'm seeing now more than ever the devaluing of motherhood and children yeah, in general. So so can you speak yeah. how valuable being a mother is to God? Well, I, I'm with you. It's my favorite thing I've ever done in my life. And you did such a good job on <laughs> that. Oh, thank you. You did <laughs> a good job. Listen, John and I believe, I did a good job too. You did. You, you, you did. did. Well done. You're a great mom. Well done. I feel like when you when you become a mother, it really throws you into the the, the hands of God yeah. because there's this entrustment of this beautiful life and you know how flawed you are yeah. oh and you gosh. don't want to make mistakes. Yeah. You yeah. want to do it well. And it's like forever, 24-7, like right yeah. out of yep. the womb, right? Yep. I mean, yep. your whole world a is huge turned upside down. Yep. Yes. In, in the most magnificent way. In a good way. way. Yeah. And, and I hear people, like you just hear people say, I'm just a mother. Yes. Well, there's no such thing as, just. just a mother. Yeah. A mother is a warrior. That's right. A mother is a hero. Right. A mother so is somebody who lays down life to bring so forth true. life. Yes. A mother wants more for her children. We need more women yes. with the hearts of a mother than we ever need. Like we need so a, 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 a wake up of mothers. And you know, even the devaluing of that has been well, like, well, you have to have it all. Well, I feel like you yes. can have it all, but not at the same time. Right. Yeah. You know, and exactly. so sometimes you have to know what is your season. Exactly. Like in this season, I'm going to do this. So that in the next season, I'll take the strength of that season. And I think a lot of times we don't understand that life is seasonal. Right. Marriages are seasonal. There's things you go through in early parts that are different in latter parts. You know, my husband is is my dream husband. Yeah. He he's he's become so much more to me than he even was when we were first married. So you're supposed to grow. Work yeah. the same with, yeah. with me. Yeah, just it was it got better and better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But if I had measured uh, my response in one season and not understand that we are growing. And then with children, like you have to just understand they're going to be young and they're going to have, they're going to have yes. certain needs in this season. And it's so fast. That's the thing. It's like, I've never, it's a blur. I've never seen anybody say, oh, I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. I've only heard people say, I regret that I wasn't there or wasn't present or I didn't spend as much That I didn't them. enjoy them as much. Yeah. I, I felt like in my, my two oldest sons, I survived them. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy them. And so I had to give up the trifolding of the underwear, the bleaching of the grout. You had this amazing call to ministry, and you could have wanted to dive into that right away when your kids were young, but you waited and you were present at home with your children. There were seasons, yeah. I said no, yeah. I said no to a lot in one season. That's a huge message for now, because yeah. everyone, there's this pressure to throw back right back yeah. into your career and get back to it and make something of it. We're living in a world, especially with us, that there's that pressure, but that time when they're little is some of the most important yeah. time in their lives. So I lived in Dallas when I had my first baby and I went right back to work after I gave birth to Addison and put him in childcare. And I had so much stress. Yeah, I felt so uh, conflicted. And when we moved from Dallas to Florida, I decided I'm staying home. Mm -hmm. It meant a sacrifice. But the things is that I was there for my boys. Yeah. There was many places that asked me to speak. I never did Sunday mornings. Not because I thought it was wrong for women to do Sunday mornings, but I knew my husband wasn't home and I needed to take my kids to church on Sunday morning because yeah. it wasn't okay for me to travel and speak and then not bring my children into the house of God. Right. So and good. so I made choices <laughs> oh, when they were Oh, you raised yours in church just like we did. Even did. though like mm -hmm. parachurch ministries or traveling. Yes. But we still and were always in a church. And even though the church isn't perfect, yeah, I yes, still exactly. brought my kids into the yes. house of God and, to be honest with you, forced them to worship. I remember, you know, my boys... <laughs> no, no, literally. literally. Tell us, tell well, okay, us. I literally remember my boys sitting there in worship, hands in the pocket, looking around, <laughs> acting disgusted, and I watched as this beautiful, young, 
Down syndrome man was Aww. in front of us worshiping with all of his heart. Mm. And you couldn't have missed him. Mm. And we were driving home and I said to my boys, did you see that, that young man worshiping with all of his heart? My boys were like, yes. I said, did you see him crying? They're like, yes. And he said, do you think you might have more to be thankful than he has? And you had your hands in your pocket. You think everybody comes to church to look mm. at you and see what you're wearing, but they don't. And I remember my boys were like, can we go back tonight? Oh, and I said, oh, yes, oh yes, we'll go back. And oh. and because I said, you worship is yeah. just not a prelude. Yeah, That's yeah. So good. It's, that is so good. It's a posture. And and so um thankfully, you know, my boys, they they've been they've seasoned hardship in the church, but they love Jesus mm -hmm. and they understand that Jesus is the one that died for them, not their pastors. So and um, as imperfect as the church is, Jesus loves her and yeah. he is committed to uh, making her a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I love That's that. True. I love that. Well, we again are out of time. I did want to mention one thing, kind of backtrack just a little bit because Holy Spirit said to, is um, I interviewed a, a transgender uh his name was Walt. He was a male. He was an engineer, very successful, married, kids, all of that, but decided that he was a woman, had all the surgeries. But I just want to say, I really feel like there was somebody watching that you're considering this. I remember he said to me that when he finally made the decision, he ended up divorcing his wife. His, his life was a mess, but he just had to get that surgery, that when he woke up mm -hmm. after the surgery, because yeah. he thought this will be like, yes. But he said when he woke up, he said he felt nothing but fear mm -hmm. and sorrow over the decision that he had made. And um, it's a long story short. I will tell you the end of the story is um, he ended up getting involved in a church that loved him back to Jesus. And he ended up becoming a man. Mm -hmm. He went from being a, one, a man to a woman back to a man. Ended up marrying a woman in the church. It was a long process. And I was sitting there thinking... Uh, well, so obviously you had the surgery, so you're not like fully a man. You're married, because I know everybody's thinking that, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. I remember he looked at me and he said, you know what? He said, when he called me son, that's all I needed to be fully man. And so I just want to say, watch that show and really pray about this because God has a plan for your life and this is not the answer. And he's going to show you, he's going to lead you, guide you. This is just part of it. Uh, this is just one little window. You've been asking the Lord to show you. So anyway, God created you to be what you are and you know what that is. Well, you know, Proverbs 18.10 18, says that the character of God is a tower of strength. It's not just a trait he has, it's who he is. And as we spend time with him, he fills us with his strength, empowers us to walk out our purpose. He helps us to persevere through difficulties and helps us to live an abundant life. If you're watching today and you need prayer, again, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have people that call from all over the world. We pray over all those prayer requests here at Daystar every day. You can also, of course, go to daystar.com, click on prayer, submit your request that way if you'd rather go through the internet. But I want to thank my dear friend Lisa for joining us at the table. Once again, remember to pick up a copy of her devotional, Strong. It's available now. And for more on her ministry, you can visit her online at lisabevere.com. Be sure to join the conversation after the program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Great conversation. We love you today. No matter what we said, if we offended you, I'm so sorry. But we love you, and we are excited about what God is going to continue to do in your life. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.